So before I can start anything, I will make a couple of requests. First of all, if you guys can come forward, brothers and sisters, there are a lot of empty spaces. Uh, you don't have to fulfill this, but this is just a request. If you fulfill this request, it will make me happy, alhamdulillah. Um, because this is the habits of Sahaba. Whenever they would sit uh, to listen to Rasulullah Sallallahu they would sit close to Rasulullah Sallallahu And even as a teacher, I have taught many classes to MSA and YM. So those students who sit at the back, backbenchers, they are naughty boys. Uh, so Alhamdulillah, you all look decent. So please move up if you can, if you can. Jazakumullah khairan. Second request before we can start is that if you can all fulfill one sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi right now, this sunnah is agreed upon. There is no ikhtalaf, no difference of opinion on this sunnah. And all the brothers and sisters have to fulfill this sunnah right now. And that sunnah is actually the sunnah of Ismail. Can you all smile? Please. Jazakumullah khairan. Keep smiling. Even when you leave the conference, go to work, go to your home. So your family, your co-workers should know that you have learned at least a thing from the conference. And that is having a smiling face. Okay. So I have a topic in front of me, why our homes are broken. Or to be straightforward, blunt, I will not make this talk very academic uh, by giving tafsir or hadith or fiqh references. I will talk about the most common reason of divorces in Muslim community and their solution. Very straightforward. Uh, and before I can start, you might think, Imam Asif, wait a minute, the conference theme is faith over fear. Your topic is uh, why our homes are broken. We were expecting you to make fun of Trump, which I, will, which I won't. Uh, we were expecting you to talk about Islamophobia, fear. What is this marital, marital problem comes from? Um, I, I, I know that Islamophobia is a big problem right now in USA. But that will only start when we will leave our house. That is an external problem. When my wife will leave the house in hijab, when I will leave the house with the fuzziness hair, then that problem will start. But the marital life problem the abusive environment in our homes, when the husband is physically abusive to wife, when the wife is verbally abusive, and this will leave a huge impact on our kids. They will, have, they will become mental health patients. This will harm our kids more than Islamophobia. I'm not undermining the importance of discussing the Islamophobia, which I hope that, inshallah, other speakers like Dr. Dalia Fahmi and Dr. Sajid Dunya and Ustad Najid Mahmood will speak. But this is very important. We cannot ignore this. This is the internal problem. We cannot help the external uh, problems and external communities once we have problem within our home. You know, this, when you are flying in an airplane, they have a passenger announcement that when the oxygen mask drop, you need to help yourself first before helping others. So we, have, we are the one who need oxygen in our homes. So we need to fix this issue. Just to give you guys heads up that I have taught this course for six hours, six hour workshop throughout different communities in states about the most common reason of divorces um, in Muslim community and their Islamic solution. So it's very hard for me to just summarize that in the 15 minutes. But what I will do inshallah, that I will going to pick few of those which is relevant for the audience. Let's start with the number one. Number one, or may not number one, one of the many reasons of divorces or one of the many reasons of broken homes or separation or cause of friction in our Muslim community is in-laws. I said it's really straightforward talk, right? First of all, how many of you think in-laws are a cause of friction in marital life? Can you raise hand? Few. Maybe the rest are sitting with their in-laws right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No problem, no problem. Allah is your witness. Um, but as an imam who is in the field of marital counseling, I have few certification. There are actually few houses which are, cause, which are being uh, destroyed with the, because they don't know how to deal with the in-laws. First of all, first of all, how to start it? I'm not here to tell you right now in just these 10, 15 minutes uh, how to deal with in-laws or joint families better or separate or so forth. I will just give you a few basic rules in a brief way. First, these jokes are problematic about mother-in-law, about father-in-law. If you'll Google it, just Google it right now. Mother-in-law J. And the first search option will come mother-in-law jokes. So your daughter, before she become daughter-in-law, 
she have this scary image of mother-in-law with two horns. So that image actually creates a lot of problem that my mother-in-law will be bad, she'll be zalima, she'll be evil woman, and she cannot have a positive image. A lot of young sisters actually ask me this question, especially sisters, not brothers, actually, the sisters ask, because of the abuse between the mother-in-law and daughter-in-law, that, Imam, is there any ayah of the Quran or hadith where it's mentioned that I have to be nice with my mother-in-law? Sister, you don't need an ayah for that. You have to be nice with everyone. That's the first extreme, that we have to be nice with everyone. Generally, there is a rule we have to be nice with the elders, especially when that elder is the parent of my spouse. That's nurun ala nur. We have to be nice with them. But then there is other extreme when the elders of the family abuse this. There are cases also. Or when they exploit this respect. So there have to be balance between the respect and the exploitation should not be there. And then there are a few more issues, but I don't have time to discuss all those, because as I said, I will mention briefly some of the important reasons why our homes are broken. So that was in-laws. Obviously, for further detail, you can uh, attend our classes, or which will be offered on ILF, uh, uh, ILF uh, Facebook page, Islamic Learning Foundation. You can like that page, inshallah. We'll start from December, inshallah. Okay, second reason, and which is most relevant for our community, I would say, and that is abuse. That is abuse. Let's, let's make this interactive. How many kinds of abuse are there? Can you say it loud? Can you say it loud? Verbal abuse, yeah, sister, very good. Second, physical abuse, financial abuse, isolated her, and then emotional or psychological. But it's one kind of abuse where we Muslims have done PhD, which you didn't mention, and that is a spiritual abuse. I will say what it is. Well, you know what is physical abuse, right? Beating, hitting, slapping, spitting, verbal abuse, insulting other person in front of people, emotional abuse. Oh, if you eat too much biryani and gain fat, I will divorce you. That's emotional abuse. You want to cook biryani, but you want to put restriction. Um, with chan masala, obviously. <laughs> but the problem with, I, would, I, see, I have seen in my five years as an imam experience, of marital counseling is a spiritual abuse. We, some Muslims, Islam is a beautiful religion, alhamdulillah, but because of some Muslims abusing Quran and Hadith to manifest their ugly behavior, really makes it ugly religion, apparently, apparently. Please forgive me if you feel bad. Because of some people. So I promise myself I will not going to share any case study, but just one random anonymous case study that one sister called me and he, she said that my husband hit me on my face very severely. So I was speaking with her, and during the conversation I asked, did you speak to your mother-in-law, alayhim as -salam? Did you speak? And she said, uh, yeah, I spoke to her. And she said that, beta, she, he can hit you. My son can hit you, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah Nisa, ayat number 34, became Zakir Naik. In Surah Nisa, ayat number 34, with complete gunna. So actually, she, he can hit you. Now tell me honestly, first of all, that's not the accurate translation or interpretation. That's not the tafsir. Secondly, if any non-Muslim sister, or generally any non-Muslim would hear this tafsir in this environment, what perception of Islam they will have? So that's why actually we are making Islam look ugly to some people because of our abuse of Quran and Sunnah. This is called a spiritual abuse, that you are abusing Quran and Sunnah, because you, you want to manifest your own ego or you want to just hide your ugly behavior and so forth. So even this is very, getting very common in uh, Muslim families. What we have to do, we have to understand that when you will going to do this, especially in front of your kids, research has shown that most of the time they will become mental health patients. They will have mental health diseases, anxiety, stress, so forth. So it's very important for us to make sure that we have a healthy environment for our kids. We were worried after the election that what we were going to talk to our kids. That's, a, that's, a, that's obviously a big stress, but that's, again, thinking too much externally. We have problem internally. We need to figure that out also, how to fix it, the abusive and domestic violence issues. So that's the second, one of the most common reason. First was in-laws, second is, second is abuse. Okay, I have five minutes, inshallah, I will going to end with one or two. Um, 
third, and you might be surprised that I brought this up. There are so many reasons, finances, incompatibility, but I'm bringing this up, and again, you will be surprised, and that is infidelity. And you would say, Imam Asif, astaghfirullah, you are speaking into Ikna Convention, main hall session, and you are discussing about these things. First of all, we should never shy away from our tradition of Quran and Sunnah. When Allah can mention in Surah Yusuf complete case study, not one ayah, complete case study about this, the being unfaithful to his spouse. Why do we have to shy away? The problem is we don't discuss these things and that's why it's increasing. We have to tell the Islamic perception, Islamic um, uh, way of dealing with this. And Surah Yusuf actually, if you look, look at the minister's wife incident, that does not even tell us what is halal or what is haram. That tells us why this incident happened. Why the cases of unfaithfulness or the infidelity happen? You know, generally it happens because there's an emotional void and then there is no emotional attachment between spouses and you will going to seek this emotional attachment with someone else, maybe your secretary, maybe someone else, maybe your personal assistant, and then eventually those things will start. And then physical attachment will happen. See how Allah explained this in Surah Yusuf. So he was, she was minister's wife, minister is busy, He's traveling all the time because he's a minister, politician. And Yusuf, who was a good looking guy, he was actually the personal secretary or personal assistant of minister's wife. And minister's wife was not a spiritually, uh, a spiritually high woman because he, the, he, she had some spiritual issues in the text of Quran. And then those things happen. When Allah can address this in such a relevant way to our community, then why we have to shy away? If you are thinking right now, then no, no, Imam Sahib, this did only happen in the movies. Muslim community is, alhamdulillah, very pious, very righteous. These things doesn't happen in Muslim community. Then you can come to me after this session. I will tell you case after case after case. So many cases have come only to me. You can ask other uh, speakers also. So this is one of those things where we cannot ignore the elephant in the room. Few other things, just I will mention it briefly. Financial issue is one of the big issues which is causing friction in our family. Um, then there is incompatibility, then there is unrealistic expectation, and then there is even actually modern day psychologist says this, this cell phone. We, these are smartphones, but sometimes uh, we are not smart enough to use these smartphones. So even they are, the causing, they are causing friction in our families, social media. So we need to understand this, that where the problem is coming to better, to better handle this in a proactive way. I will end by saying this, what is the solution? There are many solutions to this, but what is the solution? Solution is to be proactive. Most of you will give calls to imam or to therapist or to marriage counselor that we have this issue. Can you help us imam? Can you help us therapist? And they will help you, but we need to be proactive. Those of you who are single and looking to get married, those who will walk in the matrimonial area and the bazaar, I will actually ask you to attend some marriage classes. The Muslim community should have the Nikah 101 classes, I would say, all over these states. Because there is a problem. We should teach our kids before they will get married. That see, these are the problem, problems, and you need to solve this out proactively. Because unfortunately, we Muslims, when we think of marriage, you know how we think that you are ready for marriage? In some communities or in some culture. So a guy will walk to you, an adult guy, and he will say, oh, mashallah, getting strong, ready for marriage, right? I'm not joking. There are few people like this. They have, what kind of attitude you will have towards marriage. So we have to learn what marriage is, the challenges of marriage before getting married so that we can uh, not eliminate but eradicate these solution, uh, these problems. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to understand these things in a proper context.